the use of this plant. <clears throat> they continue to deny us uh, stating it rates up with heroin and has to be treated the same way, which if you educate yourself even this much, you find that laughable. That, that, that it could, and it's the only time <clears throat> that we allow a substance to be categorized by law enforcement. The DEA makes, the Drug Enforcement Agency makes the ruling on keeping marijuana a class one controlled substance right up with heroin and all that. And nothing else do we allow that. It's elected officials are supposed to do that. They're supposed to make the laws. They're supposed to have the courage to make the laws. But in the case of marijuana, they don't have the courage. They pass it on. Um, politicians like Hillary Clinton, when you hear her talk, what does she respond with? Well, more studies need to be done. No, we already finance a university over in Israel. It's a cannabis university financed by the United States. I forget the doctor's name, but he's like the expert. He's already said that marijuana will help the head trauma in the NFL players that get the concussions. Marijuana, marijuana will help post-traumatic stress from all our military people being sent off to fight these Vietnam Wars all over again. And they come home scarred and they come home with their own inner head trauma. Marijuana will help that. And then I urge you to simply read the introduction to my book. It's written by a gentleman named Steve Cubby. Steve Cubby was instrumental in 1996 of getting, quote, medical marijuana legal in California. He was the breakthrough. Steve Cubby led the breakthrough to tear down this phony wall that's been put up. And he got targeted. Now, Steve Cubby had non-operable adrenal cancer. He was given a five-year death sentence. He had five years to live. Well, that was 35 years ago. And they attributed his life completely to cannabis marijuana. And when he got it legalized in California, he was legally growing it in his home according to California law but I said he was targeted by the federal DEA. They raided his house with SWAT teams. This guy with adrenal inoperable cancer who needs this plant is keeping him alive. They raided his house with SWAT teams, carted Steve off to prison, and immediately his cancer started to reverse itself and the tumor started to grow. He lost 22 pounds in prison all while they were imprisoning him because he was growing 14 plants in his house to keep himself alive. Gee, our government looks out for us, don't they? <laughs> Gee, our government treats us like adults, don't they? You know, come on. Well, anyway, the good news to the story, Steve, clearer heads, cooler heads prevailed. Steve managed to get out, gained the weight back, wrote the intro in my book and is alive today 35 years after be, being given a five-year death sentence and it's com completely attributed to marijuana it's, it's given him his life and given me my life back and that's why i got on the horse and thought there's two things i want to accomplish now i'm 65 you got to start limiting it Number one, I want to see marijuana legalized across the United States of America before I die. That's a goal that I want, that I'm going to work for, speak out about, and, and, and hopefully it'll get done the way it is now at the grassroots level. Every state's passing it. Want to hear a few of the unique windfalls that have come out? First of all, uh, they always told you it's the gateway drug, right? Well, they found out that heroin use in all the states where marijuana has been legalized, heroin use has dropped. The opposite of what we've been told all these years. It's dropped. Uh, the state of Washington has seen a 15% drop in their statewide judicial budget. 
I can assure you as a governor, that's hundreds of millions of dollars, people, savings in their judicial budget. Colorado this year spending 300 million new dollars on their schools that they got from taxing marijuana because it's legal. People, this is an industry waiting to happen. You have the liquor industry, you have the tobacco industry. It's time for the marijuana industry. It's jobs. It's now, let's have some fun. Imagine this. How many people know who George Washington was? How many people know who Thomas Jefferson was? Do you know if they live today, they would probably be raided by the DEA. They would be doing 10 to 12 years in the federal penitentiary today as being major drug dealers. Because Washington and Jefferson both grew massive quantities of marijuana and sold it. That makes you a drug dealer. Now, they still, with all this marijuana they were growing, right? They still managed to put together these documents, didn't they? Called the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. So if they were all stoned and they still managed to do that, that's kind of a positive thing, don't you think? And believe me, they knew the difference because in Washington's diaries, he talked and wrote one year about how he allowed his marijuana to cross-pollinate. So all his plants turned male and he was ticked off. Those of you that know about marijuana know that there's a male plant and a female and if they cross-pollinate it all becomes hemp, which makes great rope and it great sales for ships. Now, here's another thing that irks me. Our, the books we have in our schools that teach our children, that teach our children the history according to the government. The history according to what the government wants your kids to learn. Do you know what they failed to write in our history books? I never read it. And I went through public education in Minnesota, kindergarten through senior year at Roosevelt High School. Marijuana was the economic backbone of this country for its first 150 to 160 years of existence. Let me repeat that. Marijuana was the economic backbone of this country. How could things have changed? You know, you could actually, the, the British, when we were the colonies, ordered the colonies to grow it because they didn't have room in England. England's only the size of the state of New York. We had a lot of room here. So we have the fields that could grow it. It was the number one crop in the South, which you never read about in our books. The only reason cotton became number one was the invention of the cotton gin. Because prior to that, marijuana hemp was easier to harvest, simpler. But then the cotton gin changed that, and it sent it to the back burner. Now, how did a country whose whole economic base for 160 years get to where it is today? It's a good question, don't you think? How the hell this was a, the driving thing of our nation during its formative years? And the, the nation did pretty good. You know, they had some major problems, but they managed to get through them with legal marijuana. Legal marijuana, they managed to get through. What, what changed? Well, what changed was a guy named I think it's Harry Amslinger or something like that was his name, and William Randolph Hearst back in the late 30s. Hearst owned the big newspaper, you know, William Randolph Hearst, the big money. Well, in the spirit of true capitalism, he didn't want to compete. Capitalism means compete, kind of, you know, it means go out there and compete. Uh, he didn't, he, his thoughts on competing was eliminate your competition. 